what a calamity of errors. Um, I, I, yeah, I finished Lost and I had every intention of retiring into a quiet life of motherhood and writing and I had set it up. I was like set up. I, I was, everything was going according to plan. It was all tickety-boo. And then I was laid up in bed after my labor and um, I got a call from Peter Jackson's team saying, um, can we, we've been trying to get a hold of you through for weeks through my agent and I wasn't taking any calls so they couldn't get a hold of me. They got a hold of me through my partner who happened to be friends with a guy who worked on the movie and they finally got through to me and said we want you to play this role. And um, The Hobbit was my favorite book as a kid and The Sylvan Elves were my favorite characters in the book and I used to fantasize about being a Sylvan Elf and they said we want you to play a Sylvan Elf and I was, I. I, was, I turned to my partner and I was like, I can't say no, I have to do this, I have to do this. So within three months of having my first child, I was back at work and that was not in the plan. It sort of feels like this magical thing that happened because also the sort of end result of this is that I had such a good time making this film. I had such a positive experience that it's it's kind of made me realize oh there's actually there could be a way that I could really love this job and if I just you know if I end up do working with the right people on the right projects it can be really rewarding so um, it's really set me on a totally different course um, and you know God bless Peter for that. Yeah, yeah, and and I've also um, one of the great things that came out of going to New Zealand and working with Peter was I met this um, incredible illustrator who has illustrated my first children's storybook, and I'm in negotiations with publishers right now and hoping that might end up on shelves in April. And and that's um, that's my sort of that's my dream, like that's my life goal is to be a writer. So if I become a published writer through this film, I mean it's been a great two years. Yeah, that, um, Tauriel's costume, was one of the things we knew we had to accomplish was of course she had to be feminine and, and she had to be elven. But she was a mili she's, a, she's she is the head of the elven guard, she's the head of the sylvan guard. And as a result, she also has to be prepared for battle at any moment. So we were bringing in elements of, um, you know, sort of military almost attire. And so she wears this, I keep forgetting what it's called, what they called it. There's like a specific name for it, but it's this leather breastplate essentially. And um, and all of her, all of Tauriel's clothing is made out of either leather or suede. So it's very durable and very strong. and, and protective and she has these gauntlets that she wears that are also protective and actually when I went into battle for real I mean when we were doing the stunts uh, my protective clothing was helpful because it actually protected me and, and there were moments when I think oh if I didn't have this on I'd be in a lot more pain right now um, so that was the that was Tauriel's look it had to come from a sort of a militant's place